Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on Sir Vagabond in Japan, and we are on page one. <clears throat> so you are going to need two large flaps and two small flaps. The small flaps are four by four, and you're going to score a half inch on, on the four inch side. And then I went ahead and used my chomper to... Um, what do they call this? They call it a stub. Add a stub to um, both of the ends of the small and large flap. I think it's just going to make it a little bit more interesting. And what I've decided, oh, those are four by four. These are four by seven. So four inches across, seven inches high. And then you score a half inch on the seven inch side. What you're going to do is come in from both edges, three eighths of an inch. And I just put a little tick mark there. I know I need to start my flap right there. <clears throat> the large flaps are going to be bottom up. <clears throat> and before I lay all my tape down, I'm going to pull in my ruler again and do my best to make sure that I'm getting three eighths of an inch, you know, all the way from top to bottom in the event the um the flap or the page is not perfectly square and i think i need to nudge it a little bit and it turns out i'm laying it in now it is it, it i could have just gone flush with the bottom but i was trying to make sure it went straight up so now we're going to do the same thing on this side and that's just a little detail you can wiggle it left or right because you want to make sure it looks straight to the edge of the paper, even if you have to go off a little bit on the bottom. Visually, you're going to be drawn more to these straight lines than these straight lines. <clears throat> and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put down my corner, hold it up so that I've got a pivot point. <laughs> Mess around with the ruler. Okay, lay it in. And I'm just pushing this flap against the ruler to get a straight edge. Oops, look how, how far off I am on the bottom. I think I, I rushed it a little. I'm having a hard time seeing in, in, uh, in this light. I know you guys are too. I'm going to straighten that up, especially since, um, since I haven't burnished it. So a little hiccup in my thought process there. <clears throat> I'm just using a spatula since I didn't press it into place I should be able to remove this without creating any any real damage now I'm going to reapply it and I'm going to change the orientation because that's just going to help me see this edge better and the other thing I'm going to do rather than my tick mark disappeared Rather than um, just have one tick mark, I think I'm going to put another tick mark up here to help me. Here we go. So we just need to mark it at three eighths. If you're new here, um, I, I talk about uh, techniques and tips throughout my videos. One of the things I haven't mentioned in a long, long time is I use this me mechanical pencil. And one of the reasons I do is because I can get a really fine tip on it. It is 0.5. Um, and what 0.5 millimeters, what that really means is it's the width of the, um, the lead that's coming out of the pencil. And what I found early on was... I would mark something with a wider pencil and then when I would go to install something I couldn't am I trying to install it at the midpoint of the mark the left side of the mark or the right side of the mark so I figured the thinner um, your marking tool is the more precise you're going to be um, across the project okay I think this is going to be a little bit easier yeah I'm just marrying it up to 
that mark I made up here. And now we're in. Okay, so these are in now. Um, these are bottom up. Now we're going to flip it over and we're going to have these come top down. And I don't have any markings on this side because I'm just going to line it up with the flap that's already there. So another way to line things up too is once you have them in, let me get a contrast sheet out here for you guys. Once you have it in, and I can see I might have to, to align this even a little bit better. Oh no, it looks good. So what I'm looking for is a consistent line here. If it wasn't consistent, you can take it off and try to straighten it, which is what I did, or you can try to reform your score line by adjusting these to where you get this consistent line in between and rescoring it. Um, but in this case, it doesn't look like I need to do that. But what I do need to do, oops, I got stuck on my uh, contrast sheet there, is line these up with this, especially since I know they're straight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay it down and I'm looking at this edge to this edge. Actually, I should go the other way. This, the inside edge to the outside edge. And I wanna line these up and then I'm gonna shift it up and down until it's even with the edge of the pocket page. Be careful not to push the bottom flap from its location. Otherwise you could, when you let go, have a, it could be a skew. Now I'm still holding this as a pivot point and I don't have a small enough contrast sheet in here, but I'll show you what I've done. So I can still adjust left or right to get that straight line. Okay, and we're in. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. <clears throat> Pretty simple. <clears throat> And it's hard for you guys to see. I know it is black on black on black, but you'll have to take my word for it. I'm going to go um, line up my top flap with the inside line of the bottom flap. There we go. Ta-da! Now we're going to hold this all closed with magnets. Magnet on each side. I like to use 5 8 inch tape to cover my magnets. Magnets don't come with a be beveled edge. They're, they're straight, and I understand why. I'm sure they use a laser to cut them. Otherwise, they'd have some waste. Um, it's not like they're formed in a cast. So we're going to go on the top first, and the reason we're going to do that is I don't want to place a magnet here and then have it be too close to the edge. So we're going to place a magnet on the top first. And I broke this magnet, but that's okay. This still works, so I'm not going to waste it. I'm just going to try to get it to lay flat. If it would have shattered into multiple, more than two pieces, I probably wouldn't bother with it. But two is pretty easy to realign on a piece of tape. Although it's tricky because the magnets are sticky to each other and then they're also sticking to the um, paper. Okay. We'll use it. Actually, is it working? Did I do it right? It doesn't want to line up. Line up so I think I've got a positive and a negative on here. So I got to flip it over. That should work. So when you're testing it, when you're putting your magnet on there, it should should be it should match the same location. That means you've got the positive, both pieces of the positive up, and both pieces of the negative down, and so forth. Place that right there. <clears throat> and like I was saying, I use the tape to soften the edges of the magnet. I knew I was going somewhere with that, right? <laughs> there we go okay now we're just going to make sure everything's aligned as we go to close our flap 
that it's coming down as expected and lined up with the lower one. This is the tricky part about this page is really all about just you know getting your line straight. <clears throat> okay, now they look kind of like two envelopes. So you've got a flap here, 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 and here. That is page one, everyone. I'll be back soon. Hey everyone, we're back and we're on page one. We're gonna do the fun stuff. It's um time to start decorating. Okay, so I've kind of scrambled up all the collections, so of course it makes it hard to tell you which pack I'm choosing it from, but I'm fairly certain this is this came from the 12 by 12 collection pack. And I took this image and I've split it across these four parts of the flaps and that's where we're headed and then on the inside this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack we're going to put the red down and I really like the way this looked especially when it was closed you see the red borders really makes the tan stand out I thought I'd ink these but apparently I haven't so we're going to start with that I'm using mahogany and we've been out of stock for a while, but I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the description because we might have it back in stock by the time I release this video. And um, any dark brown ink is suitable. I just happen to prefer this, this color. It seems to go really well with Stamperia and Graphic 45. When you make a lot of albums, you, you start to sort of simplify some of the standards or the um, staples, like my um, background or the base album is, is either black, white, cream, and um, I use the same powder puff ink across paper collections, stuff like that. It just keeps it simple so that you've always got stock on hand when you're ready to start an album and you're not trying to match absolutely everything to the paper collection and I, I just think black helps the pattern pop and I also think it's classic it will never go out of style now having said that if you're doing something that's like a juvenile collection or a baby collection I wouldn't recommend doing black okay let's go ahead and get this done so on the bottom we're going to use this and this pattern like I said came from the 12 by 12 and I split it in half so that when this is closed it'll look like that and I did ink these and they are ready mm. nope I didn't ink one edge I wasn't sure if I was gonna have to trim again I'm gonna use that as a mm. contrast <laughs> that's Nala talking to everybody Alright. I'll get to you in a minute, honey. Okay. That looks nice. Now let's go ahead and add this piece. It's inked all the way around. I hear you. But I'm kind of busy right now. It's hard to be patient, isn't it? Okay, there we go. So we get that continuous pattern. We do the same thing on this side. I'll close that. And I know that my air conditioner is running in the background, but I have been able to sort some of that out through software. So hopefully it's not too annoying for you guys. Otherwise, it's just too hot to record. I can't do it without the air running. I know one thing. If we ever move, I'm never going to have my craft room on the south side of the house. It's too hot, and it stays hot. It's the hottest room in the house. I think the little um, notched, or what do they call it, uh, stub, looks nice. 
So I'm happy I did that. And I did it on a, a couple places in the album. It's just a simple effect, but I think it looks really good. It also helps uh, you realize that this is a flap. Okay, just a minute, babe. I don't know what she's after. So let's see, we've got these two pieces in. Now it's time to do the inside. I just liked this pattern, so I'm, I'm splitting it across the two. Um, and I think I'm gonna trim from the top, so it's bigger than I need. But the question is by how much? I'm not sure. So I'm actually gonna cut this to Pressing too hard broke my. So both of these need to be trimmed. Looks about right. I'll be right back. We'll put those down. realized I forgot my chomper in the other room so I'm gonna have to go get that but I trimmed these out just have to chomp the corner but since I don't have that handy I'm gonna go ahead and add the top ones and they go like this this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack and it looks like it's cut to fit already. Just needs a little ink. I appreciate everybody being patient for this. I know it's, it's taken a while for me to get it together. I'm hoping to significantly speed up projects over the coming weeks, uh, especially since all the Graphic 45 new collections are in. Um, I've already got the base album built for one of the graphic collections, so at least that much is done. So for those of you watching this video, I'm going to do something fun at the end. On the last video in the series, there's a little video that I shot or somebody else shot of me after I got my hair cut today. And it's a little bit of little tiny celebration dance and I just thought I'd share it with you guys. I have officially gone all natural and had the last bit of my color cut off today. And I was pretty, pretty darn happy with the results. So I thought I'd share that with you guys at the end. It turns out my hairdresser does it for her, um, for her website. Um, she's, she's awesome. Her name is Mel and she works at a salon called Radar here in San Diego. And she has been helping me um, over the last three years actually go from colored to gray. And without her help, I, th I think I would have given up many, many times. So she's helped me um, with creative haircuts to help minimize the line. Um, and today was sort of our little victory dance. So I thought that would be fun to share with you guys. I'm going to be back in a second because I need to crimp those, not crimp, chomp those corners. And then we will work on the inside of the lower flaps. Okay, I got my chomper in here and I've cut 
cut it down and it looks like I, I'm happy with that. I don't think I need to trim it any further. So I had mentioned, well, it's a little, little tighter than I, uh, than I want it. I'm going to take a sliver off. I mentioned before I'm going to start doing something a little different in, in the descriptor. I'm going to tell you the, um, the page, but also the build sequence. And in this particular case, you're only going to see the page sequence because I have, is that true? No, it's not true entirely. I was going to say I decided to build it or in the same sequence as a page, but I have done a few things different. Page four and five are going to be the last pages I do. And that's because I'm going to make the two features on there look like um, a Japanese screen or room divider. And um, it really doesn't matter um, in this case what order you do it in because it's all going to be little small pieces put together so you're definitely going to have enough of that paper left it's going to be quite a bit of color blocking but i think it's going to be pretty interesting so i just needed to take a sliver off and we'll re-ink In progress. So the last thing we're going to do is the back side here. And these are going to be full pieces. They're not going to be color blocked. And I think this is, yeah, this is where I was headed. So I want to marry up yeah, the images. So this was cut from a 12 by 12 and I sliced it here. So these would go on the bottom. So you'll see the pattern continue when you come across to the bottom. Looks like I need ink and one final trim. Let's get the ink on, then we'll test it. And in this uh, project, I used two 12 by 12 collection packs, one 8 by 8 collection pack, one 8 by 8 backgrounds pack, and I'm also using um, the A4 collectibles. So that's what I'm using for this project. In addition to that, I'm using a pack of two extra single sheets to cover the box that this is going to go into. And all that will be listed in the descript description. If you scroll down, the first thing you'll see is material list. The next thing you'll see is the cut list. There we go. That's page one. Isn't that pretty? I 
love this dragon. And that opens down. There we go. That's page one. Okay, when we come back, we will work on page two.